Hello everybody, welcome back to Crafternoon. I'm Miss Amy at the Moapa Valley Library. Um, I hope you're all having a fantastic summer and getting a lot of reading done, doing a lot of fun activities, um, learning and growing even though we're not at school, which is possible. All right, so as you can see today, we're gonna do a fun little painting um of the milky way or space or a galaxy whatever you want to call it this happens to be my daughter's favorite color galaxy just all of the stuff in the space um yeah so we are gonna need a few different things today um some of it's normal and some of it might seem a little strange um we've got our water and those same normal little paints uh, we've got a paintbrush, good tip on the end, and I have a toothbrush here today. That's going to be fun. Okay, and we have salt. Regular table salt is fine. Sea salt makes just a slightly different um, effect for what we're going for, but whatever you have at home will work just great. And we've got some of our white paint like we used um, a couple weeks ago. All right, so, and before we get painting, I just want to mention a little bit of something um, about reference material. Um, when you are painting something or drawing or doing any kind of a, um, art, and um, one thing that can really help you be successful and make it look really good is having reference material, either being outside and drawing what you see outside or finding pictures in books or on the internet um, to help you know what you want to paint and where things should go and what colors should look like. Um, like here's a great example. I love this one um, of a nebula or a galaxy and it's got big stars with flashing and kind of cloud-like formations in it. Um, some really great pinky purple colors. Um, and I like to have something like this lying around when I'm doing painting of galaxies in the space and the sky. Um, here is another nebula. Look at the colors on that one. Quite a bit different from the first one I showed you. It's got greens and yellows and oranges and browns, and blues as well as the pink and the purple. So lots of different colors. You can pretty much choose whatever color you want on this project. And then um, as far as the Milky Way goes, it's kind of hard to see the Milky Way at night on Earth in the city. But if you go out in the middle of nowhere, um, you can actually see that arm of the galaxy stretching across the sky. And it kind of does the same thing as the nebula. It's kind of got the pinky purple thing going on. It looks a little cloudy. You can see individual skies. Um, but it also has kind of a cloudy, ethereal effect. Um, here is another one. The shape of this one goes right across the top. Nice big arch right there. And one more, kind of show you a combination of the bright, crazy colors in the, the sky. I'm thinking this might be a little bit enhanced color-wise, but hey, nobody said you couldn't do that with paint. That's what's making you want to do a project and that's what you do okay so yeah it helps to have reference material if it's something that you see every day it's still a good idea to have a picture in front of you um, to work from so that you can know where to put what and what colors to use and maybe what the shadows look like so you know where to put those it's really helpful all right so we're going to get started here okay so i have drawn a light pencil circle onto this square of watercolor paper and you can do that if you want and put it inside a world globe type of a space if you want to fill the whole picture um, with galaxy you can do that the whole page however you want to do it all right but first thing we want to do is get our circle wet let's so get nice clear water all over your paintbrush and fill in that circle and remember you don't want it to be so wet that puddles form um, you just want a nice wet sheen on your paper and 
You go around and around and around. Okay. If you find that you've got puddles happening, you can dry your brush off a little bit. I'm gonna tap it on my paper towel here, and you can go through and you can pick up some of that paper. A sort of dry brush will pick up some of that water so that you can get rid of that puddle there. All right, okay. So I'm thinking I'm wanting to do kind of the orangey, purpley, pink thing um, from for my galaxy. And I'm gonna start with kind of some yellow actually and get it good and wet and I don't want my yellow to be too bright so I'm gonna put it here and mix a lot of water in it so that it's kind of pale and this is how I'm gonna kind of block in the shape of the arm of the galaxy the the Milky Way onto my paper here so I'm gonna start over here on this side and just kind of dab the paint gently now remember that as the paint dries, it's gonna bleed in to the surrounding water, the, the wet paper, so that yellow is gonna spread. So I kinda of wanna make a smaller shape than I really intend to have in the end. Um, nice thing about yellow is that you can cover it up. So if it gets too big, you can cover it up. All right. I'm going to mix in a little bit of orange with this yellow and kind of go around the edges. I might mix in with the yellow a little bit, do it on top of that. And you might notice that as you're putting these colors down next to each other and on top of each other, they interact with each other. Something that was, you know, a brighter orange, if I put it on top of my yellow, it will become more of a yellow orange color as it bleeds in and blends and sits on top of the color that's underneath it. Yeah. All right, I think that's good for the orange. I'm gonna add some red, but I'm gonna make it more on the pink side. So, got lots of water with your red to make pink. Okay. You notice that I'm not making, you know, a straight line. Not all the colors are starting from one end and going clear across. They're just kind of mixing and blending with each other. Just kind of dancing around on the paper, having a good time. All right. And lastly, I'm going to add some purple to this. Put it down here first. There you go. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. You notice that I put the purple with the orange and the yellow and the red on the thing and it kind of made a subdued purple color. Not quite so bright. And I might have more purple out here away. Now this is much bigger than what I want it to be, the, the colored spot, but um, I'm going to show you what I'll do in a little bit. So it's a little bit bigger and wider than I really want it to be in the finished picture. But um, yeah, I want the color all over, so. Okay, now it looks like this edge here is drying out a little bit, which can be a problem, but um, you can fix it pretty easily. You just get your brush all wet with fresh water, kind of bounce around right next to it right there. So I'm going to soften that edge up right there. And I'm going to add some more water on this side. Air conditioning blew on my paper and dried it out a little bit. Okay. All right. Now it's time for the space end of things. Um, you can go straight black. You can mix black and blue together. Black and blue and purple together. Um, whatever you want to do. If you look at these, uh, you know, by reference material, you can see that uh, space isn't just straight black. It's got all kinds of stuff going on up there. All right, so now this is what I mean. I'm going to kind of go over and around and mix into the other colors that are on my paper. Yeah, go all the way down to the edge. Oops, way too wet there. Get that 
it off in there. Okay. And I need more black. So, darkness is bleeding into the color and it's mixing it all up and it's working together to make something really pretty. You want to try to make it a little bit darker than you really want it to be. Um, the black paint especially likes to fade pretty quite a bit when um, it's drying so it might look a little bit shockingly dark but it won't be that dark by the time it dries. So do the same thing over here on the other side. Sometimes I like to even do a little bit of something like that. If you notice, the black kind of likes to try to melt into all the colors as well. Okay, that's looking kind of cool. This one's fun because you don't ever know what you're going to get, so sometimes you just kind of have to go with the flow and accept what the paper and the paint want to give you that day. And it's kind of a fun way to practice. You don't have to be in control of everything and it will still turn out just great. Okay, now before we let this dry, there's one more thing we're gonna do. We're gonna take our salt, put a little bit in my hand here. So I don't know if you can see that. You see that the sea salt has little teeny bits and slightly bigger bits and dusty bits all over the place. That's why I like to use that because it's uneven. Okay. Now we're going to sprinkle salt, not all over the paper, but here in the center, closest to where the colors are and over the top of the colors. You don't want to go all over the place. The salt will help give it more of the cloud-like effect. And one of the reasons it looks like that, especially up in the Milky Way, is that there are so many the stars that they kind of blend into each other and they kind of make it look a little cloudy, a little bit brighter in some places. Okay, and you can have a lot in one spot and a little bit in another spot. You don't need to make it go even. But I think that's going to do it right there. Okay, put my leftover salt back in. All right, okay, so yeah, we're at the point where we're going to set this aside and let it dry. But here's my other one. Okay, and see what I mean by the black kind of fading a little bit? It's not quite as dark as it was when I laid it down. Um, but you can also see where the salt has done its job, soaking up the pigment and kind of making these fun little spidery shapes. Um, I still have salt on my paper, so I'm gonna rub that off. Okay, all right, I think that's most of it. Okay, so now you're gonna see why I've got newspaper down on my surface today, because this is a little messy. All right, so we're gonna get the toothbrush and our fabulous white paint. I'm gonna get the toothbrush a little bit wet, because this paint's kind of thick. If you're, what, if you um, give this a go and it's not coming out right, um, your paint might be too thick. So it helps if you get a little bit wet. Okay, so this is how we're gonna get the stars on without painting every single little one all over the page. That's tedious. All right, so I'm gonna just flick. I'm just running my, hand, my finger across the toothbrush here and it's flicking little paint stars all over. You notice I've got some big puddles there. I'll have to pick those up with my paintbrush here in a second. Okay. We want them everywhere, but mostly down the center. So and I know I'm just dragging my finger across the toothbrush like this and letting it flick off. Okay, this is fun because you get messy. All right, okay, so we need to pick up this paint because it's 
not where I want it to be. Okay, and if you're looking at this, and this has got a really good mix of big and small, if you decide that you don't have enough big or small um, things in there, you can get a little bit of paint on the end of your paintbrush like that. You can dab them in. If you're like, oh, you know what? I think maybe there should be something bigger over there. You can put it there. And then you can also, if you want to, um, very, very delicately with the very tip of your brush, you can put some of those star blazes shininess make a little X over the top of one of these little spots and it will look like it's twinkling right at you. Okay, so you get the idea. Kind of fun, okay. Ooh, I'm really liking that. I like that right there, okay. Okay, so you can be done now if you want. You can decide you want to put a little bit of landscape in front of it. Um, I'm going to show you a quick way to do some pine trees in the front, um, but you can leave it like this if you want to. You could draw another circle around the outside and put little bolts on it, make it look like you're looking out of the door of a, the window of a spaceship. That would be fun. Um, yeah, so, and this thing you can do, you can do it with acrylic paint. You can get a Sharpie marker out and do this next thing that I'm going to show you. I'm going to just use the black paint straight out of the pan. And we're going to do like we did in the example that I showed you. Um, so I'm going to draw in a couple tree trunks, just a straight line. It can be actually a crooked line too if you want. And then as we go further to the outside of the circle, they're going to get a little bit taller. And then as we get closer to the center of the circle, they're going to get shorter. And it's okay if, you know, I'm not getting complete lines here. I just want to put an idea of where I want my little pine trees to show up. These trees have got lots of little friends. Okay, and you don't need to have them evenly spaced. They can be kind of random, random placement. You know, trees don't grow like they do in a well-kept garden. Okay, I think that'll do for now. All right, now we're gonna do the tree part. Okay, so you just start up here at the top and I'm just gonna gently push down with my brush and kind of go back and forth. If you've ever watched Bob Ross, this is how he does pine trees. So he goes back and forth and pushes down so that the paintbrush kind of splashes paint there. And you don't want it to get to look too zigzaggy. If it looks too zigzaggy, you can fill in some of the spaces. You see, that's a pretty effective and realistic silhouette of a pine tree. If you wanted to, you could do um, a more deciduous tree, you know, like an apple tree with regular leaves on it instead of, you know, like a pine tree has. Um, knock yourself out. You could put buildings in front of it and put little um, yellow or white windows on the buildings so that it looks like that they're out in the nighttime. Somebody's up in the middle of the night probably painting. So there we go. So you just keep doing that. You don't have to do one after another. See, I've skipped a couple brand, uh, trunks. I'm going to go back in a second and fill those in, but I just felt like doing that other tree first. Okay, you just keep on going. Well, I hope that you've been having a really good and productive and enjoyable summer doing things um, with your family and friends at home or wherever you end up being. Keep reading. Keep using that library card. You can find all kinds of books and um, videos and doing all kinds of things 
Um, if you want to learn more about art, uh, books are, books and, and watching videos are a really good way to do that. And just practice. Just do it all the time. Like I said before, this stuff, it's just paper. If it's not working out for you, you can toss that and start over. It's not that big a deal. You just think about that. And every time you do it, it's going to be a little bit better than the last time. Think of new ways to combine the techniques that I've shown you. I saw actually a photo. It was a very dark picture of a farm, kind of like what we did with the clouds painting, but they had galaxy over the top. It was really pretty. So, yeah. See what you can end up with. Have a good time. Thank you for joining me.